take me back to that time, baby. What kind of, and what kind of bread? I bet it was like that real bread, too. The yeast love and shit. It yeah. says it was all French bread. You're giving it a look at it. It was not French bread. Uh, the co first couple of industries, I, li I did like this. The first couple of industries that started using refrigeration was uh, beer brewing. So they could brew consistent beer. Germans came in with their great beer, but they needed to use refrigeration so they could beer a consistent product all year round. Huh. Pretty good, right? Huh. Meat packing too. Meat packing. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, because because without refrigerating your beef, here's the thing: vegetarians and environmentalists should be kissing the dick of the family members who descended from the refrigerator inventors. Okay, follow that line of reasoning there. Because okay. oh, because you kill less meat. You kill less meat. You kill less animals because it rots huh. less. It yeah. rots. Uh, it lasts longer. You can freeze it. That shit lasts for what? A year. Month, month, a year? Well, that's it. Yeah. Frozen meat. Frozen well, meat. Then it starts to get it, it, it's shitty. Then you I then you throw it away. It off, yeah, you, you can just shave it off. You're right. Yeah. It's still good. It's, it's not gonna good. kill you. So with with I I wonder the impact on livestock and agriculture that refrigeration has had. That's a good question. I didn't find that. I did find here's some stats for you. Um, I got stats for you. 1921. In 1921, there was 5,000 refrigerators manufactured. Oh, boo -boo. 1931, 10 years later, there's a million. And in 1950s, in 90% of homes. Wait, how many years is that in between? Uh, 10 years in between the, the million jump and about 20 before the 90%. 20 years, 90%. That's a big solution. 90% of homes have it? Yeah. That's a big ass solution. How many homes have satellites? <laughs> A lot of homes have I don't dishes. know. Probably they have like a dishes. lot. No, they have probably a lot of a lot. dishes, buddy. They, they probably have a lot. You know what? Dish and Dish Network sucks. That's yeah. satellite. There you go. Yeah. That's satellite TV. Yeah. yeah. No. You know what, though? Um, I think this. I think that, uh, that a lot of modern refrigerators rely on satellite. I don't I don't have the really? stats. It. No. <laughs> this is bullshitting. Look, man. Refrigeration mm. is a big solution. And that is a big market penetration. And it is something that we can't yeah. do without. But you know what a refrigerator is? It's basically a box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do we have to debate yeah. what a box is again on this show? No, because we no, it's, it's a box. It's I'll, a give box. Him, I'll give them that one. It's, def it's an ice box. It's an ice box. It's definitely you know, a box. You, you know can't what? have a refrigerator without a box. No. It's a box. Go blow up boxes, people. <laughs> That's what Dick's trying to say this episode, is that it's a box. And you know what's another kind of box? A vagina. Pussies are also boxes. That's true. That's a fact. Look it up. What does that I, have to do with this? I was just thinking about how great boxes are. I can oh. talk about boxes all day. And then people in the comments... Yeah, I'm going back to boxes. People in the comments are saying, well, uh, boxes have to be square. No, they don't. There's round boxes. There's hexagonal boxes. Triangle boxes. You can put posters in. And refrigerators. Another type of box. Go vote up boxes, people. If you think refrigeration is a solution, you better... You bet your ass that boxes are solutions. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Except drop boxes. Yeah, but, it, those. <laughs> yeah, but you can get boxed in also. You don't want to get boxed in. No, you don't. No. Some, some boxes are problems. Like drop boxes are problems. Being boxed in is a problem. You don't want to be in a militarized zone either. A militarized box, right? If you're boxed in by tanks, like yeah. say, uh, what are those? Housers? What? No. What are the what are the Howitzers? The no. giant guns. Panzer guns. Panzers. Panzers. You don't Panzers. want to be boxed in by Panzers, then you're fucked. That's a real. Specific reference. Oh, it's a real specific box. <laughs> Transporting food. That was made possible by refrigeration. Oh. So that all these all these wonder you like a variety of food. I do. Right? Yeah. That's thanks to refrigeration. All your weird fruits that you eat. I do eat a lot of weird fruit. Yeah, here's the thing though, Dick. Okay, you just brought up something that I just uh -huh. realized. I brought in in a couple of episodes ago on the on the problems show. I brought in partially hydrogenated oils, and those were invented specifically to avoid the cost of transportation with refrigeration. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because they didn't have to refrigerate that stuff, that oil that they were transporting in butters and the Criscos and, and margarines and all these like weird yeah. butters and things, mm. and it, it has contributed to a 20% increase in coronary heart disease Therefore, refrigeration is a killer. No, no, no. Vote it down. Refrigeration was a good solution, and they tried <laughs> to make it better, and they fucked up. Because refrigeration is as perfect as it gets. You can't, you can't make it any better by getting hydrogenated oils in there or whatever. Well, so here's what I don't understand. Do they use refrigerators on space shuttles? Uh, yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> no, they don't. That's why they, they gotta freeze all that oxygen, don't they? How do you think they get oxygen to be a liquid? It's compressed. No, they <clears> freeze <throat> it. No, that's it. They do that by, through compression. They put it in a box. Yeah. They put it in yeah, a big box. Another box. That's what space shuttles are, essentially. They're big boxes. All right. So what's your point? Photo boxes. <laughs> Hey, here's the thing. It's cheaper. What? You, you know what? You don't That's need refrigeration good. in space, which is where we're going.
new society as we know it. Yeah. Well, space is the biggest refrigerator of all. That's right. Yeah. Made food cheaper? How about that? It made pre-cut meat possible. Walk in, grab a pack of meat. Before you had to stand in line to the butcher. Oh, oh man, what that, that is that is a good point. Less, I hate wine. Yes, there we go. Less food waste. You're not wasting food, you're getting refrigerated. Yeah, um, yeah, that's a good point. It has brought down the cost of food. It is a big solution, Dick. I'll give you that. How about this? Vaccines. What about them? You need refrigeration to keep your vaccines good. You yeah. can take them into the middle of Africa oh, or wherever, or to Beverly Hills, wherever you're taking your vaccines. I was hoping, I was hoping you wouldn't bring that up. That's a really good point. I thought about it and I was like, ah, I'm not gonna bring this up. Fuck, fuck this. And then, <laughs> not a contact. <laughs> no. <laughs> Classic, no, you know, what I'm waiting for because I, I wanted to swoop in and save your problem from the oh, fucking of defeat. Yeah. yeah, because everyone right now listening right now, is, is, they have their hand hovering over boxes or refrigeration. They're trying to decide what to vote for. I think it's boxes. Yeah. Boxes is not your solution to that. <laughs> it's always my solution. <laughs> boxes are my monkeys of, of problems, uh -huh. of solutions, yeah. Uh, anyway, man. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good. That's a good solution. Anything so I didn't get my refrigerator ready for burning, man. I'm gonna do it next year. No, you're not. You're not gonna. You know, here's the thing. Unless you're one of those rich dickhead billionaires who fly in yeah. from Facebook. What, what are the Wachowski brothers? No, the um, the Vanderbilt. What are those guys? Um, you know who I'm talking about? The Facebook twins. The Winklevoss. Winklevoss. Those yeah. guys. The Winklevoss twins flew in last year. Oh, they did. Yeah, they flew in on a private jet, and then they flew with their chef from Nobu. And to uh, make sushi for them every I day. Don't know. So what? That's cool. <laughs> Fly in. That's only like six hundred bucks. That's completely contrary to the ethos of Burning what Man. What do you know? You haven't been there. Yeah, but I read. I'm not an idiot. You read. What do you, you know about people the, bitching about it? What do you? Are you uh, what do you know about the 18th century? What do you? You read about refrigerators. You weren't there. You didn't. You didn't know about these refrigerators. Yeah, but in this built. case, I was in the 18th century. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Burning Man and is essentially it's that. It's just poor people bitching about somebody having a having, having opportunities they don't. No, like it's, it's just you're just comparing yourself to these rich people. Like that's so what? So what? They can fly in on a jet and you have to wait in line for twenty hours. Well, so what? Like like who cares? That's I, their deal. Yeah, I told you. So what? The so what is that it's completely contrary to the experience. It's like going camping. And saying, hey, um, so I'm, I went camping last weekend. I brought in my contractor to build me a log cabin. Yeah. yeah it was a really good camping experience. That's not camping, shithead. I guess. Yeah, it's, it's your kind of camping. If you want to do that, if you're, if you're next to this campground and you want to bitch about Maddox's awesome uh, casino slash log cabin that he built in, off the river, the, per, off the Kern River, then you, you, oh, what? It's always about this comparison. Like, if the only reason it's a problem is because people are comparing themselves to the ultra-rich. Like, that's, and there's this ubiquitous sentiment that, like, you have any right to compare your life to theirs. Your life is fine. Just deal with your own shit. You want a jet? I don't know. Be born as somebody who has a jet. Otherwise, you don't have a fucking jet. It's not a big deal. Like, why, are, why is everyone so wrapped up in the advantages of the super-rich? So they have jets and yachts. Who fucking cares? You can have fun without a jet or a yacht. No, 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 Dick. I think the, the point was lost on you. I don't think that people have a problem with them being rich. I mean, some people definitely do. Yes. I personally do not because, for example, a better example, another example of this that has nothing to do with money mm -hmm. is, say, for example, in video game speedruns. In video games, I, yeah. I have video games on the mic. A, I've been a real world example. <laughs> it is a real world example, Sean. Max, you don't know the principles Sean. of video games. Yeah, because in a video game speed run, it's predicated upon your skill. Yeah. Your skill level is what matters. Yeah. So if somebody comes in and says, "Hey guys, I have a tool assistant speed run. I wrote a script that blah 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 blah." So it's what? not the same thing. It's not. What? Are you competing point. against them? In a video game speedrun, you are actually. It's a competition. But it, are, is their score allowed into the uh, whatever play? Is it allowed into sanctioned play? No. And that, no. And specific, but it's also uh, counter to the experience. Like, you could, you could say, for example, uh, train really hard and become a, a really strong bodybuilder. Or you could get bionic exoskeleton. You could get steroids. Let's say, yeah, I mean, you let's keep it in the realm of reality, there please. You, there, you, you can do steroids. So I'm not pissed that some guys juice up. Like, 
that's their deal. They want to look like that. The only reason I would be bitter and pissed about them looking like juiced up monsters is because I'm envious of that. And you know what I mean? And that's and envy is a bad thing. It's the same as like Burning Man when these billionaires come in and all the plebs and the normies like me bitch about it. Like, oh, where's my yacht? I don't have, I don't have a jet. I'm pissed off. They shouldn't be able to bring their jet into my party. It's like, why do you care? Why don't you compare yourself to it? It's not a fucking envy. No, because it's really
I, uh, I don't do anything. Oh. Well, what do you like about it? I mean, here's the, that's why I didn't bring it up, because now we have to get into it. Oh, no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have to get I don't think we have to get on that. Well, if you had a day in the sentence that you liked about it, what would you feel with it? Um, get more connected to people. Like, people have, um, people aren't rushing around in this job and care of God that place while they're out there. They're just out there to do big shit. Can you make fan of, like, like a cruise ship? No, because that's like a manufactured event. Like a cruise ship is all, and I, and I used to want to go on a cruise ship, but then I saw pictures of an actual cruise ship, and it's like people being crammed onto a cell phone. And it's all manufactured, and it's all, it's like a guided tour. Like, I don't do guided tours for places, because I don't like to sit there and be lectured by some dude uh, who's reading off an Wikipedia page about, like, what is it, what I'm looking at before. Yeah, right? Like, I'll just walk around and have yeah, and have those pictures. Well, all right, man. Uh, you're entitled to enjoy Burning Man however you want. Mm -hmm. um, I'll fly my jet there one day, right? You really grab it. No, oh, they'll be all billionaires by then, yeah. right? Yeah. Because all the buildings are on four seven bucks. Now. Because there's nothing manufactured about a private jet. And flying in your own chef. Well, no, 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 it's not. It's, 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 it's not. It's, 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 what's your solution? The, the biggest solution in the universe, I think, is legalized prostitution. I 100% agree with you. In fact, uh, before the show started, we talked about our solutions, and uh, Dick and I actually brought in the exact same solution. You, uh, you originally oh, yeah, wanted to talk about. Yeah, the, the birth uh, control. Oh, the birth control one. Okay, yeah, no, oh, yeah excuse me. You no, because it was in Yeah. So, uh, it's in the news a couple weeks ago, yeah. But, uh, this like five seasons actually in the news now, today, because Amnesty International wants to legalize They want to change their official stance into legalizing prostitution. This from the New York Times. In France, England, and Ireland, lawmakers are considering new measures, and in the case of Northern Ireland and Canada, are enforcing new laws that decriminalize prostitution but impose penalties on clients using a model adopted in Sweden in 1999. Hold on, watch this video. So in 1999, in Sweden, they decided to stop penalizing women for prostitution and start right. penalizing just for men. Uh, or all the clients, because not all prostitution, prostitution, you know. Because uh, they thought that, that it's unfair because what they, they kind of do it. Sweden is a very um, uh, pro-feminist, progressive uh, culture. And they feel that if a woman is in prostitution, it must be because she has no other choice in life. And not because she might want to pursue that avenue as an additional source of income or as a primary source of income because there's nothing wrong with sex. That's not Sweden's view. Sweden's view is that women who are doing prostitution or doing any kind of sex trade or sex work must be forced into it, and therefore we shouldn't penalize them because they're already being forced. They're already being forced. They're already oh. being forced. That's, that, is, that is Sweden's view. And so to right that perceived wrong, they have started to penalize the clients, the customers. They think that that's their mostly solution. men. Right. Yeah. Well, of course, yeah. Of course. Amnesty, this is again from the New York Times, it says Amnesty International is advocating a new course decriminalizing all sex work, both for buyers and sellers. At an international conference next week in Dublin, they'll vote on whether or not to advocate the elimination of all penalties for sex work on the grounds that it is a matter of privacy between consenting adults. Yeah, no shit. Amen. Because that's exactly what it fucking is. It's nobody's business. If you want to pay for sex or if you want to prostitute yourself, what's the problem? Yeah. You're, you're allowed to prostitute yourself in a corporation. You can go and trade your hours sitting in a cubicle answering phone calls like a slave. You can go to a grocery store and ring up people's baloney all fucking day long. You can work in a post office like a slave, just hand, just picking up parcels and turning around and putting them in boxes. But the I mean, second you do anything sexual for, for money, oh, that's a huge fucking sin, isn't it? You can also stay married to a huge lunatic and have to tolerate that. So, you know? It's a different type of mental anguish to, to be in a, uh, you're, you're saying if somebody was, say, uh, you were financially dependent upon somebody. Let's say you're a housewife, right? Yeah. I mean, you get money. Or, or, there's, uh, sure, too. I've seen, I sure, have some, whatever. I, I have some friends who are in abusive, destructive relationships just because of financial convenience for them. Yeah. They put up with a lot of shit. They have women or men in their lives who completely control them manipulate them, make them feel little and 
small and broken, and they put up with the abuse for years. And that's because, legal. Yeah, that of course it's legal. We should make this as politically correct as possible and just only say that men are prostitutes so we can just talk about it without having to preface everything with, oh, oh it can also be men. It can also be men. So Ireland and Canada recently started enforcing new regulations. In Ireland, it's a $1,500 fine, or a, that, that's a thousand pounds, and a prison term for clients. God. Yeah. Sweden's penalize the customer law has caused a 50% decline. <laughs> I've been to Sweden and it's a pretty clean culture. Like I feel completely safe in Sweden. Anywhere I go, it's a, it's, a, it's so safe. In fact, at one Would point, you feel less safe if there was hookers. No, walk in the streets. No, no, no. But no. just in general, Sweden's a very low crime nation. In fact, if anyone gets murdered, it's the front page of their headlines, their national newspaper. Oh, I, porn. At one point in uh, in Sweden. I was walking by and I saw. I noticed that my shoelaces were untied, so I bent over to tie it next to this uh, um, this coffee shop. And I noticed this lady inside, babe, total babe, by the way. Everyone in Sweden's a babe, even the guys. They're all babe. So <laughs> I noticed this lady inside the coffee shop kept peering over her shoulder at me. And I thought, uh, what's this? Uh, hey, what's going on here? She you checking me up? She thought you were a terrible. No fuck that. <laughs> This lady kept peering at me. You would be like an exotic no, man there, right? I am. Yeah. Yeah. And she was like, like hey. this spicy. Uh, yeah, this spicy Armenian. Yeah. Armenian meat. Uh -huh. I, wonder, I want some extra garlic sauce yeah. with this guy. I want my sheep tended to. So she wanted me to look at her flock. So anyway, man, this uh, this lady turned around checking me out, right? And I thought, oh, hey, what's up, baby? And then I noticed she wasn't looking at me. She was watching her baby carriage which was right next to me outside while I was bending over to tie my shoes. She left her baby outside in a carriage outside this coffee shop because the crime rate is so low. It's just a thing Were you in, in the Sweden. south of Sweden? I was in uh, an area called Sofo, I believe. It's, it's a very hipster, dense area. But no, it was in uh, Stockholm. Wow, that, sounds like a, that sounds like a stupid thing to do, even to this day. It's leaving your baby stroller outside. No, but people, people, it's the crime is so low, nothing ever happens in Sweden. That's why they, you can leave your fucking baby anywhere you want. Sweden's <laughs> a baby safe country. Big problem. Yeah. Babies. Yeah. Anyway, man. So uh, we did talk stuff into... on why prostitution started to be illegal. Do you yeah. have that anywhere in there? No. Nope. I don't want to rush you, but I mean, it's uh, I it it has to do with uh, puritanical beliefs. But uh, here's here's what I uh, why. Here's what I wanted to read from uh, New York Times. It said, Amnesty International argues that sexual desire is a fundamental need and that punishing buyers may amount to a violation of their right to privacy and undermine the rights to free expression and health. So there's a lot of people in the world who have sexual dysfunction and sexual dysmorphia and all sorts of uh, uh, sexual phobias and things because they, for, for a number of reasons, it could be psychological, it could be uh, environmental, it could be institutional. Uh, it could, for a number of reasons, people have sexual problems, and sometimes they go to sex workers to experiment with sex and try to come over their, overcome their fears. There was a movie about that with, uh, okay. what's her name, Sandra? No, what's her name, uh, from Countdown? You know who I'm talking about? Jack the Ripper. No, not... <laughs> Sean! <laughs> Shitty old my problem! No, it was called Spongebob 3D. I don't remember. <laughs> with sex workers, improving their lives to enjoyment and dignity. I love when you can find like a real obscure reason where like sex work should be allowed, and then you can, like a real ultra PC version of why it should be allowed and then cram it in their face. Even though you know like most prostitution is not that. It doesn't have to be, but you know what? Right, this that's is what I love. That's it's all like you one need. little tiny yep. bit. You're like, yep. oh, you see this? You can't deny that, so we're gonna let everybody through. Because it's exactly like uh, legalizing marijuana. The majority of the fuckheads just want to smoke and get high, but there are a few, oh, a few people. There are a few. Oh, they're, they're fuckheads. Fuck you think fuck they're fuckheads too? That you think? What about you? guys who go to prostitutes? Then let me ask you that. I don't have a problem with it. I've never okay, gone, interesting. I've, I've never gone to a prostitute. Me either. And, and I wouldn't. Every girlfriend I've ever had has asked me that, and they, none of them believe that answer. I'm always shocked a little bit when I find out one of my friends has been oh, a prostitute. Really? 
Yeah, because uh, every now and then I'll be, it'll come up in a conversation. Oh, here's a, here's a funny story. So when I was on book tour for The Alphabet of Manliness, I believe the first time, I was in Austin, and I got in a, a taxi cab, and I was going on my way to the airport. And, you know, the, 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 sometimes the cab drivers are bored, and they want to make a little small talk. This was in the springtime, I believe. And the cab driver turned around and goes, oh, man, a lot of pretty ladies out there. I'm like, yeah because we just passed this flock of uh, beautiful women and he goes yeah I, lo I love i love what they wear in the summertime I'm like yeah man okay and so then he goes uh ain't no shame in paying for it <laughs> and i uh i just kind of looked down and looked out the window you know rolling my eyes look, like looking at the ceiling whatever and just hoping that was the end of the conversation he goes, oh no you just begun oh man it's a whole ride to the airport yep ain't no shame in paying for it like, and he just kept going on and on. He said, you know what? It's it's better than the alternative. And I, I thought, well, what's the alternative? I, Ow, I don't fuck. know. I, I didn't ask. Not paying for it and he, not getting it? I don't know what he was implying. Being ashamed of paying for it? I don't know what he was implying. No, think bigger and more aggressive. <laughs> it could be, you're right. right? It could be, it could yeah. be that, but it also could be the alternative is dating. Well, that's also I awful. mean, man, yeah, that's awful. <laughs> Dating's the worst. The wor yeah. Here's the thing, man. Dating is the long game of prostitution. It's and if you if all you're going into a relationship is for sex and you don't ever intend to date that person, then yeah. it's this kind of like long dance that we do as a society where I know people, I know women in my life who will not put out until the third date, regardless of whether or not they end up continuing yeah, yeah. to date the person. They and have so, that rule, but they do. Yeah, well, of course, yeah, of course they do. I mean, that when they're with me, pants drop, baby. Yeah, they, they can't control I didn't mean themselves. I turn That's this right into a sandbox. sandbox. <laughs> like, uh, well, I guess I'll get caught in the bicycle handlebars. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Sean! Sean, every These single thing. These bicycle handlebars are ribbed for your pleasure. Sean, edit yourself out of the episode. Every single thing you said is that's a piss me off. <laughs> All right. So anyway, man. Uh, yeah, but uh, a lot of times these women are disappointed because... After they put out, the guy stops calling them, and they yeah. blah, 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 blah. Because you have built up so much of this pretension about sex and so much expectation, and when it doesn't pan out the way you want, then suddenly the, the guy's the bad guy, and women are less likely to put out, blah, blah, blah. If everybody... Yeah, a lot of times they're just, like, really selfish and shitty in bed. You know, like, what am I doing? Busting my hump, trying to, talk, trying to bang this girl, and she's not any good at it. Here's the thing, Dick. Everybody likes and enjoys sex. And um, it's something that everybody wants. Uh, we all fucking want, all want it, it, right? Yeah. Why don't we just get over this whole pretension, this huge hang-up that we have about sex, and just admit that we all want it and just do it more often? It's very weird that, that there's not outrage, that there isn't a moral outrage about prostitution being illegal. Because it's definitely just a way to control what women do with their bodies, right? Yeah. It's 100% that. Yeah. The so, biggest, most ubiquitous way we control women and what they do with their bodies. And there's just, and, and I think most people see it as good that it's illegal. Yeah, uh, it's a huge shame. Crazy. It's, it's kind of like male circumcision. We talk about female genital mutilation, but mar male circumcision is something that we see as kind of a positive, and there's really not many benefits to it. But anyway, that's another discussion. Um, the, this New York Times article goes on. It says, Amnesty also sides with the argument made recently by work sex workers in France that penalizing customers would drive prostitution further underground, making the workers more vulnerable to danger. That's absolutely true. And Dick, you and I have, have uh, uh, friends who are porn stars, right? Sure. One of my good friends is Ella Darling. She was a guest on the live show, and she'll probably be a guest on uh, one of our future episodes. She is a porn star, and she is a sex worker. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. And it, I have seen, I've been out there in public with her when she gets recognized or when she tells people what she does, and, they, and it's, a, it's the entire gamut of reactions to it, from shame to uh, encouragement to uh, fascination. But, and weird fascination. Well, yeah. Okay, yeah. 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 But, uh, yeah, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it, and this demonization of it is appalling. But you know what, Dick? You know who is opposed to this? This is from New York Times, too. Uh, excuse me. This is from ChristianPost.com. Okay. But it's not who you think. A letter written by Anne Hathaway, Kate Winslet, Meryl Streep, Gloria Steinem, the Salvation Army, the Sisters of the Good Shepherd, and a ton of reverends denounced the push by Amnesty International for legal Yeah. Are you surprised by all those actresses?
Those actresses think prostitution, they want to further control women's bodies. It says here in New York Times, it really undermines the whole concept of human rights to call it the right of a man to buy another human being for sex, said Jessica Newworth, a former Amnesty member and founder of the Equality Now Group, an international women's rights group based in New York and London. Yeah, so these, these women and celebrities have come out denouncing Amnesty International, and they are completely opposed to legalizing prostitution, which is a huge problem. Well, I most of them trade on sex anyway. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Kate Winslet? Legal, it could be taxed. 
You know, it should be illegal. Posting infected pictures of yourself on Tinder. Like, like if you black out a couple of pins, that should be illegal. That should be a crime. You know what? There could, that could be addressed for better education of men to realize when you're dealing with a faker. And usually you can tell because it's a top down photo and they're looking up, which makes that look really good. You can't have that education? Yeah. Hey, so if you put up a camera, you can get away with it, right? You put the camera over, you record your uh, practice session, and it's shooting porn. And it's shooting porno. The material is so hard. Life constitutes an angle. But pornography is. He just laughs at sandpaper. Pornography is the sandpaper. Apparently. We, all have, we all are okay with that. Like, sure. But as Flat. soon as you play, yeah. it just rubs the sand off of you. And it's not being so recorded. Shit, what, I don't have my nice sandpaper anymore since I don't do this very often. Maybe they just want to see everyone bang. So that stuff can take a pretty heavy, like, pollen and wheel. It's, it's, it's completely indestructible. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is my I can actually use uh, a right, more powerful wheel on it than I would have this Okay, all right. Yeah, I'm using a metal polisher for it. I love when they actually find this stuff. Yeah. And it's just a fucking circle, right? How the hell do you know which end goes on? You know what I'm saying? Part I do. Everybody, everybody knows this, right? right? This is a problem yeah, for men one, and you women alike. You pull that fucking it, thing out, so that you, it, you try to put it on, place, it's, it's like, not working. So you try to turn it over and put it on, only to find like, that you know, the other way was the correct are way. Are they actually? I don't know if I've had that amount of trouble, but I've had so much trouble that I've thrown the condom away and. No more orders to today. Not use one and then What's that? To go no more orders that. today. Or so that's no, you're talking too late. to the guy who has a problem uh, putting it's out. It's too late. I could do one and be yeah. really Oh, no, no. I mean, I, and that's not even on his head. That's just on the bed. 40% of men say they've lost erection. orders. Trying to use five. Huge problem. 40% of boners. Boners that are about to be used, man. That's the most valuable kind of boner there is. Right? 40%. So this is what I'm saying, right? You got the condom, right? You pull it out of the wrapper, impossible to tell which way it goes on. Well, what? How do you tell? Which way the reservoir is pointing? That yeah. soggy little ch stupid thing that, like, this is now I gotta look at this sad, Whoa, soggy, nice. wilting little thing. That's oh, already yeah, for both. already a problem. And we've already, already this having one, to right? jump over Crash this mental hurdle. Or... And it could bounce no, a different way. Too. Too. Oh. You mean the, the, the reservoir? Well, yeah, yeah exactly. So we got them. exactly. So Another. now you're solving the Rubik's cube of a condom, trying to put it on. Forty dollars worth of sales. What if it had like a little message written on it that could only be read one way? Because it's kind of see-through, right? Why don't they just print something on it? Like the Have number a nice eight. Day. No, like the number eight. No, 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 no. <laughs> something that can't, is, this, is only one way. We should print up labels yeah. tomorrow. Yeah, that's a great solution, yeah, man. Send them all out. Directions. Oh, the shipping labels. Well, here's mm -hmm. the thing. Shit, I, I wanted I to do that to that. We can if you want. And it's because it compromises the structural stability uh, of the condo. No, okay. But I, tomorrow, so I, I might off, set you up doing it because I have... Yeah, so much no, to do. If you show me how, how like, kind of break in, in, uh, in you. And it's funny because yeah, people have been asking me what exactly my role is that, in the operation kind of since I don't make the sense or the soap. And I was like, oh, I do the. They're making them ribs and glowing the dark. All the processing and shipping. Shit in them now. But they can't print. Yeah. So far, like, you're doing the processing and shipping. <laughs> yeah, well, but you, you're a huge investor in it. Like without you, I wouldn't financially have been able to do it. You also. It's hard to target, translate those tasks to someone who actually... Your marketing? You know, what do you do exactly? Book, uh, yeah, I didn't do all the marketing. Ignored it, but, uh, or some of it. You know I think you did some too. A little. They have 50 much. shades of gray branded cock rings. <laughs> yeah. What? Oh, yeah. It was in the Tupperware aisle at the uh, local Target. I have a picture of it. They just have a huge did array say of cock rings. Oh, yeah, there were cock rings. Did it say cock ring on it? Uh, I think it said penis rings. But, yeah, there were, there were cock rings. There were really vibrating cock rings. Dome it over. Does it go 
goes in a hole, I, I really you put the washer and you dump it over right? the washer Maybe so it can't solution. come out. Come on. Yeah, so See, the hole's that yeah. big. If they're making virtual the reality for you, where you can be a uh, pretend thicker. superhero with six arms and fuck yeah, yourself, I'm, I think they could print on a condom. That's how... Yeah, okay. with a little bit of trepidation not, because mm -hmm. I really worried about the structural integrity of that car. Most of the time, most of the time when they, when any kind of like latex or balloons or anything you write on them, they basically give like the weakness. It's a whole lot easier to do, well, well I'm not easier, but it's just printed. Easier to make a good looking and functioning razor handle, I think, but to do one with the level of the rib. Because they're on the side, not part of the rib. I mean, I drew the shape of this on paper and then transferred it to this. Try to keep this one from getting ruined. Oh, okay. Okay. Sure. Uh, good solution. <laughs> 